Hi there. This is a video lesson for chapter 13. The main topic for chapter 13 is solutions. And solutions are mixtures, they're permanent mixtures, they're homogeneous mixtures with a very small particle size. So an example would be salt water. You put salt in water, you stir it up, you can't see the different parts of it, so it's homogeneous. And those particles, when that salt dissolves, those salt um, crystals break up into very small ions, so very small particles. I will let you read the notes here. Um, unfortunately, this link isn't working in the PDF that I have here, so I will put a link um, to this dissolving animation. It's it's really quick. It's like a little cartoon. Um, it's like a minute long, maybe maybe less. And it kind of shows how um, dissolving is a dynamic process. Things are moving. Um, the water molecules come in and they pull apart the salt molecule. Um, but it does a good job of kind of showing at the molecular level what dissolving is all about. And that is important. So I'll put a link to that on the Moodle site so you can check that out. Uh, more notes, there is a fair amount of vocab with this unit. Um, and I'll let you read all that. One thing I do want to talk about is this graph. This graph shows solubility curves. And the way we read this is the graph is for 100 grams of water. So if we have a beaker with 100 grams of water in it, this shows at various temperatures how much of each of these chemicals we can dissolve into that 100 grams of water. So if we have 100 grams of water at 10 degrees, we can dissolve maybe five, five grams of KClO3. At 100 grams of water at 10 degrees, we can dissolve for KCl about 30 grams of KCl. So being able to read a graph is important for this unit. There will be some questions on the test having to do with being able to read a graph like this. I could also ask questions like um, how hot do I have to get the water to dissolve 50 grams of KNO3. So if I have 100 grams of water again Asking how hot do I have to get it to dissolve 50 grams? Well, 50 grams goes straight across where it hits the KNO3 line. Go down, we're looking at about 32 degrees Celsius. This is how hot I would have to get that 100 grams of water to be able to dissolve 50 grams of the KNO3. Again, this is for 100 grams of water. So if we had 200 grams of water, we'd be able to dissolve twice as much stuff. So if we had 200 grams of water at 32 degrees or whatever we just said, instead of just being able to dissolve 50 grams, we'd be able to dissolve 100 grams. So you can kind of scale this for if you have 200 grams or 300 grams of water, um, you just double or triple what the graph tells you. Um, if you have any questions on this, you're not sure about this, stop in. I do have a fairly quick, easy worksheet you could um, look at, um, or we could talk about to uh, answer any questions you have about how to read this graph. The rest of this is notes. Um, the main thing I want to talk about today is this concept of molarity, and we talked about it a little bit on that intro day we did. But I want to talk about it a little bit more here and do some examples. So molarity, again, is the concentration expressed as moles of solute per liter of solution, or moles over liters. So big M, molarity is big M, right here. And big M, molarity, equals moles of solute over liters of solution. Now, one thing we need to be able to do is rearrange that equation. So we have big M equals moles over liters. Well, what if we want to solve for moles? Well, you know, our, we're 
given the molarity, well, we're given the liters, and the, the question is asking how many moles do we need? Well, we'd want to rearrange the equation so we get mole equals something. And to do that, what I want to do is I want to get rid of the liters on the bottom here. To do that, I'm going to multiply by L because we do the opposite. If I multiply by L on one side, I've got to multiply by L on the other. Those L's are going to cancel, and we're left with moles equals L times M. Or M times L, it doesn't really matter. And you can see that equation up here. Um, now, further, if we want to um, get an equation where we have liters alone, we'd want to do this first step, just like we did here, to get liters out of the bottom of the fraction, because liters in the bottom of the fraction makes things difficult. So we multiply by L, and then we get this equation that doesn't have a fraction. It's always easier to rearrange an equation if it doesn't have a fraction. So we do that first step just like we did here. Now if I want to get L alone, I can see that I just divide by M. So if I divide by M, those M's are going to cancel, and I'm left with L equals moles over molarity. Some questions you'll be looking for molarity. Some questions you'll be looking for moles. Some questions you'll be looking for liters. So you'll need to be able to do this kind of rearranging of the equation. Um, just to memorize these, I think, is going to be more work than it's worth. Um, but So I want to do uh, an example here. I'm just going to make up a question. If we have 2.5 moles of NaCl in 7.3 liters of solution, what is the molarity? Well, my equation is M equals moles over liters, and I know those two things. I know moles is 2.5. Liters is given to me in the question here, 7.3. And I do that. Let's see here. I do 2.5 divided by 7.3. And that gives me a big long number. Um, for sig figs, I want two sig figs, so my answer would be 0 0.34. The zero up front is not a sig fig, so my answer here has two sig figs. So, so one thing we want to talk about here is the unit. If you notice, I have moles on top and liters on the bottom. Those aren't going to cancel because they're not the same thing. So I could write this 0 0.34 moles over liters. But the simpler way to do it is since, if I look at my equation up here, moles over liters equals big M. So the easier way to write it is just 0 0.34 M. We would say that uh, 0 0.34 molar solution. So that's a real kind of basic um, molarity question. I could, and you'll see this on the practice quiz, mix this up a little. And instead of moles here, put grams. So the exact same question, except instead of moles being here, I have grams here. Well, to use my equation, I need moles. So... If I don't have moles, I will have to get moles. Um, I will do an equation like that one second. Okay, I recopied that uh, question. It's the same question except instead of moles here, I have grams. So the first thing I need to do, because to figure out molarity, I 
need moles and liters. I got liters, 7.3 liters is right there. I got liters, so that's good, but I don't have moles. So I'm gonna have to do a grams to moles conversion. It's been a while since we've done this, so I'll show my work here. 2.5 grams of NaCl. Grams, NaCl goes on the bottom. Mole, remember mole is always one. That should be a capital C. Um, if you remember the grams number, and that's why I brought up the periodic table here. If you look, Na, 22.989770, Cl, 35.453, I add those two together, and I get this really big number of 58.44. 277. I do that math and I get 0 0.043 moles. Because my grams cancels grams and I'm left with moles of NaCl. So now that I have moles, I can take that and I can plug it into the top of my equation here. I have liters right here. Liters can go in the bottom, and I can solve my um, question just like I did before. If you want to do that work, check your answer. The answer should be 0 0.0059 molar. Um, I think I might leave it there and start a second video. Um, doing a couple more examples like this, and there's another equation further in the notes for dilutions, and I want to do a couple examples of that too. So that's it for this um, video, and be sure and watch the second one. If you have any questions, be sure and stop in on one of our off days.